traders that are out there. The case that I want to discuss today is very close to home to me and to a lot of us. It took place in my home state, so I did follow it. And right from the beginning, I just knew that something was up, that nothing about this ever added up as it did not for the police or anybody else who was familiar with this case. And there's been quite a lot of public attention on it all around the world, not just here in Colorado. And I wanted to start like with serial killers first, you know, to break down how I wanted my podcast to work. But actually, the true situation I wanted to get at was just exactly the situation going on. And because we, as people, are in engagers. We want to engage with other people in society. We want to feel that we have that one somebody special in that life, in our lives, not that life. I do believe in multiple lives. Maybe that's why I said that. But it's so easy to get led down the road by somebody that you think cares about you, loves you, and maybe they start out loving you and then change later on. And this can be a dangerous situation. It can be dangerous for anybody, but women in particular. And everybody knows the most dangerous time is when a woman decides to leave an abuser. But what if you don't know how far the abuser is willing to go or you let your feelings for the abuser cloud how you feel what's going on or you believe in the sanctity of marriage so that you want to give 150% all the time to make sure this marriage works and, you know, marriages come with rough spots and you want to work it out and get out there and do it because you want to be one of those people that has a marriage that lasts to 50 years if both of you make it. And it seems like in these new times that we live in, it's really hard to even maintain a friendship, much less a relationship. And I got to hand it to people that can do that. Um, I myself have been able to accomplish that task. It has been one of the greatest loves of my life that I always wanted to have was a family and a husband. And sometimes I guess when you try too hard or you're too... Um, insecure or unknowledged as to what you're looking for, it can turn out badly for you. And this is why I wanted to do this podcast, because we need to think about relationships we get into as women. We need to stop being so caring, so giving. It's not bad to be these things, but we need to be cautious while we're doing it as well. Perpetrators are always out there looking for victims, and they seem to prey upon the nicest people. You always hear that about victims once they're gone. They were the nicest people. They were so very kind. They were so willing to help. Well, at a certain point, all of this works against you. And I'm not telling you not to do it. All I'm telling you is to be cautious. If you're a single young person out there, do your homework. There's a lot of ways to research people now. Get on the internet. Do a little check. I'm not saying you have to hire a private investigator or anything like that, but it would serve your purposes in the beginning before you start to risk your heart and your life to find out about the people that you engage with and especially want to live with, even marry. Okay, so let's get into it. The game is afoot. At this time in any town USA, we have a Midwestern state and a small town. And at the time in Colorado, wildfires were raging across the forestry. And come to find out, these fires were intentionally being set by a crazy pyromaniac. We had an incident of road rage that was really, really sad. Some guy or person felt like they were being run off the road and attacked the driver and the two children that were with them, killing a 13-year-old boy and critically injuring the driver and her 8-year-old son. That, to us, was major. I mean, I know that crime is going across the strait, but across the states... But if you think about it, back in 2018, these were kind of new things to us then, where now they're becoming everyday news. Back then, we were kind of in shock over this. There had just been an election in Colorado for the governor. A new governor had taken office, and people were happy and hopeful over that. 
and there was a lot of crime going on at the time as well. There was homelessness starting to rise. People were starting to congregate, making homeless towns, homeless patches. I don't know what you want to call them. Um, our economy was still in a bad state. Our president at the time was more dividing people than bringing them together. And politics were aflame in a way that we hadn't seen since the 60s. And on a U.S. level, we had government shutdowns, more wildfires, hurricanes, and, you know, this type of thing just never stops. It seems to escalate. You can say global warming exists or doesn't exist, but there's been a definite market change in what's been going on in the world with people as well as weather and even animals. Um, marijuana legalization had just happened. It happened here in Colorado, and it brought a great influx of people. Who would think that people would move across states to a state that had legalized marijuana? It was good in some aspects, but it was bad in a lot of aspects as well. The Parkland shootings had taken place. And that's had a lot of backlash since then, some kind of craziness about it not happening or happening. I don't know what's going on with all of that. But as you can see, America still is in a time of unrest. But we still had uh, a way to find to have a good time. We managed to eke out a good time no matter what was going on. People were watching the assassination of Versace, American Crime Story. Um, the Handmaid's Tale was a buzz everywhere. This was something new and different if you hadn't read the books. The Americans, uh, Subterfuge, um, Counter uh, Espionage and Espionage. It was really good. Music was kind of taking a different change. You had a fitness, or pardon me, finesse. It was a remix by Bruno Mars and Cardi B. For You from Shift. Fifty Shades of Grey, and it was by Liam Payne and Rita Ora, Endgame by Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran. Um, there was a lot out there. Music was changing like it always does, and people were definitely finding new things to listen to. Um, it's like the guitar and the drums didn't take over as much anymore. You could find a lot of different things out there. Uh, people were really enjoying using the dog filters, especially the girls, you know, sticking your tongue out and having the dog ears put on you. I remember the boy, high school boys calling it the sad dog pictures. Like, they couldn't understand why the girls thought it was so cute, but whatever. Uh, fidget spinners were everywhere, and we just had the beginning of what we know now as fake news, and it was starting in many countries. Little did we know how hard it was going to come and hit us here as Americans, but it did, and it was a dark and stormy night, one night, in USA, Colorado, and all the ingredients, tension, resentments, strife, all of this concocts a recipe, and the recipe is murder. This case is so deep and so complicated and broke the hearts of so many across the world. There is so much freaking information out there that I didn't really want to touch it. But with other things going on in the world that seem to be perpetuating things like this happening, I thought maybe now was a good time to uh, dig in and cover it. This was a love triangle. It was a love triangle that was beknownst only to two people in this triangle. One person was completely ignorant as to what was going on in the beginning. But you can only live a double life for so long if you're not an FBI co-agent or whatever they called him, agent on both sides, double agent, if you're not an FBI double agent. So usually um, people in these do end up getting caught up. Some men get away with it for years and you don't see it till the other woman shows up at the uh, services for the person that passed away that had the double life. But in this instance, that didn't happen. This triangle made the man want a new life. And this was a danger. 
I mean, he was living two lives, acting like he wanted one thing, but going out and doing a completely another thing. It's not a new story. We've heard it many times before. And it can be said that the murders took place for love and money, two of the greatest reasons why people kill. In this day of social media, if you do start to date someone, do a little armchair detective work on your new pair or more. You may find out information to save you heartbreak and maybe your life. And with all this social media, some people feel driven to stream and to post consistently, even addictively. This person, the um, family annihilator, did reference to the wife being too addicted to the phone, always having it in her hand, never feeling, I think, like he got 100% of attention. And for a narcissist, that's what they want. They want everybody to bow at the temple of who I am. And as long as they're getting that, they're perfectly happy. As long as you're meeting their needs and they're not bored with you yet, you're doing good. They have plenty of time to spend on you and to be with you. And a lot of times, bringing children into this type of relationship does have an extremely negative effect on them. Because they're not getting all of the attention anymore. They have to share the attention with the kids now. And so I think he felt that there was some kind of lack of intimacy that had been going on. And um, there was a lot on social media posted. There was a stream of photos of how beautiful their life was, how happy they were, how cute everybody was, how nicely dressed, what a beautiful life they had, and how much fun they had on a daily basis. An idealistic family where nothing is impossible. But, you know, there's always two sides to every story. And most people in posting pictures of themselves on Facebook about how sad or miserable of their life is or tweeting about how awful it is or um, whatever other social media types are out there they're not posting the worst things in their life they want people to think they're happy excited doing things having fun raising good children living the American dream and of course especially in America we've seen there is a semi underside it's not just America, though. It's normal for most things. You can't have one without the other, the yin and the yang. Some cultures acknowledge this more than others. Well, people sure the hell want to think the best of their lives and want everybody else to think the best of their lives. And there's nothing wrong with that, um, except if you go too far in one direction. And yet, once the camera is off, you have regular life like everybody else. And if you're addicted to posting on social media, that can be kind of a downer for you. Or you may not be as focused on it unless you're doing this social media streaming type thing. You have major life problems, financial issues, children underfoot, taking care of the house. All that freaking crap that goes into being an adult or what's called adulting nowadays. Where there was once only eyes on each other there now has to be eyes on other things and responsibilities to take place. The narcissist has the complete attention of their mate at one time, and now they don't. Big downer on their part. They thought they wanted a family, but really what they want is somebody to worship at the temple of their feet. Which is good. He, he thinks he's great, and he deserves nice things. Who doesn't deserve nice things? But you have to acknowledge that these people in your life, your wife and your kids, are actual people. They're not possessions. That's why he got a wife for, to have this possession to adore him. The children are nice, however, it can get annoying trying to be there and be all to everyone all the time, to feel like your money's not your own to spend like you want, like you have to share it or don't have control over it. Again, back to love or money. Well, um, living with a partner is not easy. And when there is not real talk about working together as a team to get out of debt or any other plan that affects you as a couple in your life and moving forward, yes, there is an agreement between them to try for another child. Maybe he thought it was going to bring them together. Maybe he didn't. But ultimately, when it was too late, he did not want another child. 
he felt like the children he had already were too much. He felt like his income was going to just the family, like he couldn't enjoy things and have the life that he wanted like he did before. That was a big drawback for him. In the meantime, he's not feeling that the child will save the marriage and it may even harm the marriage more because of the financial stress and strain that it's pushing on, putting on the family and the additional kid. Oh, things are hard when you want to be free of your responsibilities and you feel that you have no control in your life because you are now sharing your life and it is no longer young and frivolous. And this could be a big disappointment and a big danger to the family as well. And as soon as there is a beam of golden sunshine coming through this bleak, dark existence, according to him, and he meets another woman who says he's great, he's wonderful, changes in his life in so many ways as they enjoy being free and single together. He is feeling like he is young again and wishing he had taken this route prior to being a family man and engaging in family business with children. Why not just have a girl on the side? Maybe that'll work. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel young again. But ultimately, there's two people involved in that relationship when he's going away, and this person has needs as well. This person wants first. She wants to be the first wife. She wants to be the first one to give him a son. She wants, she wants, she wants. He wants to give all of that to her because he is in love with the fact that he's in love with her. Just because he just because he loves the things they do and the way that they are when they're together. They probably have more similarities in their personalities than who he's married to because there has been tales that she may have been aware of what was going on and didn't say anything or do anything. But it was clear that she was very jealous of the wife. She had even been to the house on a couple occasions, went out by herself, went through the wife's things, saw how the wife lived, saw how beautiful their life was, which it really had an underseen to it financially because they were thinking about filing bankruptcy and selling their home, which was beautiful. None of that was being discussed with the other women at the time, I don't think. Um, he was just trying to paint a picture of they were having marital difficulties, but they were to living together in the same house, but really not staying in the same bed. Again, if she had checked social media, she would have seen that all of that was a bunch of horse shit. But too busy with sparkles in her eyes and not bothering to care, even though she was on social media all the time, and at a certain point was even stalking the wife on social media, um, she did have to know. Somewhere in her, she had to know what was going on, but yet she continued. So what made both of them continue in something they knew that was so wrong? Oh, because they felt good when they were together. Yeah, that's always a good reason. I mean, that's why you start out with your spouse, isn't it? But you make vows to your spouse. You should get a divorce then if you want to be with somebody else. Once he had made this decision to move on with his life, like he was fucking single and never married with kids. He tried to get his wife to lose the child she was carrying by over almost overdosing her on Oxy. It made her really sick, but she didn't lose the baby. He had supposedly gotten this information off the internet that you could lose your baby by engaging in this type of activity. But no, it wasn't to be. More unhappiness on his part. More stubbornness on his part. So he had to come up with something different. And that something different was an idea spawned in hell. Knowing that he did not want to be married anymore, he just needed an infallible plan to get rid of the old and bring in the new. He could do this. He felt entitled to it. He had been raised to feel like he was deserving of anything that he wanted to and needed to have. He felt entitled to do this and he feels he deserves a new life with no reminders of the past and no financial responsibilities to the past as well. For somebody like him, this narcissist will never take responsibility for his actions. It will always be somebody else who made him do it or put him in the position of having to do it. At first, 
it's the wife. She was very controlling. She's the one who took him out. She's the one who made the overtures to be with him when they first started together. Like he had no fucking control in what was going on. He's just a little stick in a creek, just going along, going along. And then all of a sudden he meets this other person, becomes extremely attracted to her, and says that there was this dark behavior in between the two of them. And he can't even talk about everything that engaged between the two of them. But you don't have to know what happened between the two of them to know that he wanted to delete what was his past and just move on with what he thought was his future in any way and however he could do it. And it's up to you to decide. You can do the research and find out if you believe that the third party was involved in it or not. The CBI said this person is definitely has not been involved. I do think that she has taken advantage of the situation in a certain fashion. It's been told that she has recently been in contact with him again. He's had another um, inmate outside person relationship with the person. They exchanged a number of letters. Um, she wrote a book publishing a lot of his letters. I hear there's really incomplete responses, so I didn't go uh, read the book because it sounds like it's very one-sided and may have been written for monetary gains. So, this is the information that I have for you. I think I've done pretty much pretty good on this one, everything but giving you the name. And I do hope that you'll turn tune in with me for the great reveal. I'm going to do a live podcast. I do have some good friends and some new friends that are going to be stopping by. And we're going to talk about why women stay. And a lot of women have a lot of different reasons for it, but there are some def definitely key points that we can pinpoint on that will um, hopefully help people to know and to check up on the people as they're falling in love. I think if you fall in love too fast, that in itself can even be a danger. I've seen it work, but I've seen it work badly more than once as well. So with that, my Trues Clues aficionados, Stay safe, keep looking for the truth clues in life, keep yourself well. See you for the next episode.